Hey guys, my name is Tom Alabrando. I'm with IWI US. And um, we get some questions at customer service um, about removing the barrel. Now, there's a lot of aftermarket parts that can go on this from various places like, you know, Manicore and Gearhead Works and whatnot. And uh, occasionally you have to remove the barrel to do that. You also have to remove the barrel to switch the gun over from left to right eject. Um, we're not going to get into that so much right now. Um, what I want to talk about is removing the barrel and then reinstalling the barrel and the cocking handle and whatnot in case you do have an aftermarket part and you want to do that yourself. It's in the manual uh, on how to do this. Um, we're also going to identify that uh, there may be a design change in the cocking handle itself. There's two, a couple different generations we have here in the U.S. and we have, um, of the two, there's one you may not be familiar with which is the, the IDF version. So um, let's talk about the weapon first. Uh, what we're going to do before we pull the barrel out, we're going to clear everything, right? You always want to be safe. So we're going to clear it. Yep, it is clear. Weapon is good to go. I'm going to get rid of the bolt carrier. I've got to do that, right? If you leave the bolt in the gun, try and pull the barrel off. Um, it can lock up into the barrel extension and it's not going to come out. So we're going to get rid of this. Pull the bolt group out. Not interested in the bolt group right now. I'm not interested in the trigger group at all either. What I'm looking at is pulling off the barrel for whatever reason, installing a different rail or whatnot. So uh, the cool thing about the X95 is it's a lot simpler than the saw is to pull the barrel off. Um, so what you're going to do is I always pull the cocking handle to the rear. You need a Phillips head screwdriver, a three millimeter metric wrench. You need a barrel wrench. Okay. So if you did a bolt conversion from the right to left or left to right, um, you'll get a barrel wrench that comes with it and you need a punch just one of the smaller punches It's not that uh, particular First thing you're going to do is going to come in and there is a Phillips um, Screwdriver or you need a Phillips head screw that runs a long screw runs through the pistol grip You're going to take your screwdriver And you're going to pull that out. It's a rather long screw and just for your information if you were going to switch the uh, pistol grip from cutlass to a pistol grip, which we sell on the web store, this is how you would remove it. Unscrew it and pop the whole thing off. Now there is a long screw that runs through the center of it. If you do, this is one of our armorer's guns, but if you do remove the screw and install it, remember to put blue and blue only Loctite when you put it back. That's going to be the big thing. So there's the pistol grip screw. You're going to turn it over and on the right side you have a three, three millimeter um, screw that runs through the center uh, towards the front of the uh, receiver. You're going to grab your metric wrench, get it in there, turn it, keep turning it, and remove that screw. And there you go, comes right off. This is a very complex part of the whole process. You're going to grab the fore end and pull it off. That's it. That's all there is to it. Comes off as one piece. It's pretty simple. Now this is important. This is extremely important. This is one of the differences between the, um, one of the X95s we have here in the U.S and the, the IDF type X95. There's a hammerhead on the front. That's what I call it. It's a little hammerhead. It's what the charging handle actually locks into. You'll notice that it can can off to the left and to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it off to the right because the charging handle is on the left. I pull the charging handle out. It's extremely important that before you touch the barrel lock, you pull the charging handle out. If you leave the charging handle in and try and do the barrel lock, You'll crunch this and you'll crunch the gas cylinder and then you'll be calling customer service asking for new parts. Okay, so this has to come out before I even touch the actual barrel lock. Okay, so how we're going to do the barrel lock. What I suggest you do, just so you understand the tension of it, the barrel lock on the right side where the wrench goes into, right, you'll see there's a L and an O for locked and open. If you turn it over to the exact opposite side, you're going to notice that there's a long metal piece, like a, a tongue, that hangs down. And that's what actually keeps it from rotating. Now, it's in there tight, so it's not going to ever walk out. But that's just a guarantee that it doesn't. If you'll notice, I'm pushing on the top part, and you'll notice that that tongue kind of pops out. So you don't want to just put the wrench in and unlock it. You have to remove that tongue out of that groove first. right? But once it gets started, then you can unlock the uh, barrel lock. But that's what actually locks everything in place. So you've got to depress that. So the easiest way to do it is I call it the crutch method. I'm going to put the muzzle on the deck. I put the stock under my armpit, put the barrel lock in there, and it's going to kind of hold itself, and it's going to be in a downward position. 
And what I do is I take the punch on the opposite side. I'm going to push on that unlock that uh, locking mechanism so it's unlocked. And then I'm going to pull the barrel lock towards me. Now, once this gets started and it's out of that groove, I don't have to worry about it anymore. You're going to crank on this and it's going to be hard. It's going to move. You'll feel it about halfway through. It'll kind of give up the ghost. It'll move easily. And then to remove the barrel, my suggestion is put it straight up, grab the end, and it's kind of like the forend. You just pull it out. Now, with the X95, unlike the SAR, you do not have to remove the rail for any reason. Just leave it on, you know, leave it locked in place. And um, what, what people ask is, will it return to zero once I put it on? Well, I can tell you for a fact that I've got about uh, three different X95s that I've pulled it off, put it on with an optic, and it's returned to zero. I've had a couple that were off, but I mean just a little bit, like maybe a minute or so, but not a big deal, okay? So you install whatever part you're gonna install on the system. Um, if you do have it down to this point, it's a good time if you want to clean out that gas cylinder, which is right there. It gets dirty and all you do is you run a brass brush or a copper brush through it during normal cleaning. You don't have to remove the barrel, just put a like a shotgun sized brush. It's really good for getting the, the crud out of there. Don't ever oil this, leave it dry. This is a good time to clean it out, okay? Now to put the barrel back on again, uh, very simple. I'm gonna grab the barrel, everything upright. I'm gonna realign the barrel and you'll notice that the rail starts to kind of seat itself. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you push it all the way down. And it's important that it stays down. That's why I like this crutch method because I push the muzzle into the, into the table a little bit. I'm guaranteeing that it's compressed. I'm going to take the handle. I stick it back in again. And what I'm going to do is right now it's in the open position. I need to get it to lock that line there. So I'm going to grab the handle and I pull it back towards me, right? And I start cranking it. When I feel it bite, I can kind of give it up and you'll hear like a little light click. And what it is, is it's that piece dropping down into the, into the body and that indicates it's in. Now I can put the charging handle in because it's locked up, okay? Um, if you don't lock the barrel and you try and drop the charging handle in, what'll happen is the barrel lock will block that channel and it just won't go. It's not gonna damage anything. You're just not gonna get the charging handle in place. So there's a little hole that it goes into. I gotta move the hammerhead out of the way again. I drop it in and I'm gonna align this up and drop it all the way back. And I'm gonna push that hammerhead back into alignment, okay? Now, not only does this need to be aligned, the hammerhead, but this uh, Teflon ring, the gap has to be facing down, so towards the pistol grip. And my suggestion is when you're going to put the uh, handguard back on is squeeze it together because sometimes when you pull it off, it'll expand and it'll fight you a little bit. Easiest way to do it is kind of hold the body away from you, kind of align the, te align the Teflon ring so it's facing directly away. Um, in the top of the handguard, there's a little like cutout or box for that hammerhead to fit into, okay? So this has to be aligned. This has to be aligned, and once I get it started, right, like so, I just push it down and I lock it into place, and now it's on, you're good to go. Next thing I'll do is I'll take that three millimeter screw, remember, blue Loctite, not red, not Roxette, blue Loctite on here, push it across, get it started, grab your three millimeter uh, wrench, and turn it so it's tight. Now, if you've got a regular Allen head uh, screwdriver where you have a long, long end and a short end, my suggestion is always turn with the short end, not the long end. So if you use the long end, you can create a lot of leverage and kind of snap it. If I use the short end, right, I don't have a lot of leverage there. No matter, you know, you can get pretty hard on it, but you're gonna be hard pressed to snap anything. So use the short end to finally uh, tighten it down. Then I'm gonna turn it over, take the pistol grip and put it on. And you may be wondering why you had to take the pistol grip off at the first place, so let me explain that real quick. If you look on the front of the hand guard here, the trigger guard, excuse me, you see that little tab sticking up and that tab fits into here. And this is actually a locking point for the bottom of the rail. Unless I get this tab out, the hand guard won't come off. So I've gotta remove this. Put it on, blue Loctite, 
drop it back, grab a screwdriver, crank it back down again. And it's a long screw, so it's going to take a while for it to kind of get where it needs to go and bite. Once I get a bite, I give it a good turn so it won't come out. Take the charger handle, and I'm going to push it forward under the forwardmost position. That's going to help that uh, bolt go in easier if the charging handle is set forward. Drop it down, and then rack it aggressively. Remember, if I'm going to rack the charging handle, I don't want to be light on it. Um, there's only one thing in shooting that's uh, delicate. It's this little guy right here. Everything else is pretty aggressive, and we want to be real aggressive. So I'll suck it a couple times. It's good to go. Function test, weapon on safe, attempt to fire. It doesn't fire. Put the weapon on fire. Hold the trigger back after the hammer falls. Grab the charging handle, aggressively charge it, and then release. And I feel that, yep, it's good to go. Everything's working the way it's supposed to. So that is taking the barrel out of an X95. Um, hope this helps you. Don't bend your uh, charging handle rods. <laughs> Remember, remove the charging handle rod before you touch the bolt lock. That's the most important thing. Um, but the rest is pretty, pretty easy to figure out. Uh, if you have any more questions, look us up at iwi.us.